even after a century of service, Rotary shows its relevance as an organization that is growing and shows no sign of redundancy or anachronism or complacence, despite the fact that societies and indeed the world are changing rapidly. And today, as always, no other organization focuses on ethics in business and professions, and indeed in life itself, like Rotary does. No other organization focuses on vocational service and community service together, as Rotary does. Now, I am a great believer in the Manual of Procedure, which states that Rotary's basic philosophy, one that it has stressed ever since the 1920s, is to reconcile the desire to profit for one's own self and the duty to serve others. This indeed is the philosophy of service above self that gives Rotary its strength and makes it unique. This and the fact that Rotary urges each member to translate this concept into practice in their business and in their everyday life. This is what makes Rotary very special because when all these like-minded people sharing the same philosophy gather together in their communities first and then in the world, it gives Rotary the strength of a government while sharing the friendship as with your next door neighbor. And so to build upon and enhance our relative strengths, I would emphasize that it is good for clubs to work at enhancing ethical values in Rotary and through Rotary to the community at large. Indeed, would not that be a great way to build a more ethical society? And while some of the steps in reforming vocational service activities today are excellent, we need to go further and do more and let it proliferate by taking it even more to the level of individual clubs and communities as well as individual Rotarians themselves too. I believe if we did that, we would be able to break the box of 1.22 million Rotarians worldwide that we seem to be stuck in. Yes, Polio Plus has helped us to discover our strength, our reach, our potential. But I would say that we need not only service, but equally and more to have professional and successful business people devoted to ethics, willing to share their experience and knowledge and be available to make it a better society and a better world. This is what I would like to work on. And while believing in service above self, I would encourage clubs and districts to form teams which have the synergy to address local issues and equally to look at international and macro issues as well. Issues such as safe water management, prevention of AIDS or blindness or malaria. Rotary's strength has always been to work with youth too and the generation next. And I would strengthen these programs because that would be the best way to ensure Rotary's growth with good people. I would promote and extend youth exchange programs and develop the short and long-term peace programs, looking at ways to widen their horizons and spread, and so ensure a safer, better world in the future. I believe uh, Rotary membership growth needs to be encouraged in multiple ways. First, the public being made more aware of what Rotary is and what Rotary does. Tell the Rotary story of our efforts to eradicate polio, Rotarians working around the world to mitigate hunger, providing safe water, of our efforts to fight AIDS or blindness or malaria, of our peace scholarships programs and youth exchange and family exchange programs, 
using mass media channels of television, radio and newspapers in a planned and strategized manner, working out different methods for different areas of the world. Because they often have different cultures and languages and different way of looking at things. Coming up with a two or three year master plan, which could be implemented at local levels and if required, area-wise, using an international group of Rotarians who are media experts and hands-on people. Our second area of focus would be encouraging Rotarians around the world to bring in more members, recognizing such persons specially and individually at district events through presidential citations and recognize them too in regional and international Rotary publications and have them right there how they did it. The best performing individuals, perhaps two from each successful zone, may be invited at international events to speak about their methods of achieving success. Thirdly, I would encourage districts which have retained most members by percentage retention, retention for the year, or maybe for the past two or three years by inviting them to the convention or at the International Assembly and have them talk about how they worked out their plans. Fourth, I would send a list of GSE team members and Rotary Foundation and Peace Scholars and even IYE students from each district for the past five years with their known addresses to each district governor and ask them to consider contacting them through a district committee to see if they could uh, think of joining Rotary. Now, Rotaract members too need to be approached similarly, and so I would encourage Rotaract as an important program. Fifth, I would develop incentives, awards and recognitions to clubs which reduce their average age of members of the club by one or more years. Now that can be very significant, you know, perhaps inviting the best of such age-reducing clubs to the convention. Six, at the same time, recognizing that these days individuals often retire early, perhaps to follow areas of their own special interest, I would urge such persons, perhaps between the ages of 50 or 65, to join or rejoin Rotary, recognizing clubs at zone and international levels who do this best. Seven, I would encourage the board to explore uh, if the Council of Legislation accepts it, you know, and go ahead with it, develop to develop a new kind of family membership where both a husband and the wife or the partner can be family members, perhaps paying a bit less together than the normal per head club dues. Eight, I would encourage the board to see if they could introduce a new kind of membership, perhaps with the council's uh, okay, uh, called the corporate membership where perhaps the corporation is a club member with maybe up to six of their you know, eligible people holding a corporate classification and joining in together. My ninth point, I would carefully study the effect of the experimental cyber clubs, urging the board to extend their tenure if need be in Rotary's future plans. I believe that with computerization and remote intelligence, the world will develop into an impersonal society. People will operate henceforth from their homes and not their offices anymore. In such situations, human contacts will be very important and Rotary will become the avenue for sustaining such interactions. In a polarized society, Rotary would become the way for, to sustain better human relations. Ten, I would form a committee to study some South Asian, Korean, Taiwanese, and some East European and African countries 
who have grown well in the past few years to see if their ways and methods could be replicated in other places. 11. I would like to make Rotary leadership, including past presidents, members of the board, and trustees available and accessible to any Rotarian in the world through the internet, Rotary's website, or through email for their suggestions and observations on how we could better the present practices. Now, this will get them more involved and more committed and help to retain them as members. Finally, let me conclude that having said what I have said so far, what I would most like is to see Rotary as an organization that just not only grows quantitatively, but has in its membership people who can influence communities and societies and the world at large. In other words, while we do need numbers, I'm thinking of a quantity of quality. Quantity in Rotary must always follow quality and not the other way around. I find that increasingly, in different places and on different occasions, Rotary is often referred to as an NGO, a non-governmental organization. I don't really care to be told what we are not. I would rather be told what we are. So let us Rotarians rediscover ourselves through our avenue of vocational service as outstanding individuals from different vocations and professions, able to come together in friendship and goodwill, and willing to give time to do good, to serve our communities, our society, and our world, and its peoples. We shall do this by strengthening our organization, by focusing on the quality of the individual members, encouraging the best among the best to join our hands as early as they can, yes, but otherwise, whenever possible. They are all there, waiting to be invited to join hands and help Rotary make the world a better place in the 21st century. You know, 4 plus 4 makes 8. 4 multiplied by 4 makes 16. 4 and 4 make 44, but 4 raised to the power of 4 make 256. What I mean is that quality enhances the organization's ability to impact and grow geometrically and strengthen ourselves through our quantity of quality so that we be the difference wherever we are, a group of community leaders and ethical human beings who gather together to help lead the world. Indeed, I'm looking at nothing less than a renaissance of Rotary, with Rotarians growing ever more as a group of people who gather together to lead our world in the belief that if people will come together, so too will nations. And it is my vision that we focus on one of the still less charted areas of the Rotary world in Africa, as I have been doing for some time now. Much more needs to be done, for the needs there are great, and the Rotarians are not enough in numbers. We need to reach out to them. I see Rotary as being a major partner to agencies which are deeply committed to and involved in human development itself. Indeed, following our success in achieving a polio-free world, perhaps in the next two to three years or even less, we may need to focus on other areas of need, nationally or internationally. Areas of safe water, for example, or literacy, or food, for these are the issues that I believe will engage the attention of people in the days to come. And my vision sees Rotary being in places where it is needed most and being respected and trusted by people 
who may have misunderstood Rotary, like in some places in Middle Eastern countries. This is an initiative waiting for us to look at. I am confident that increasingly, in the decades to come, Rotarians will be the harbingers of humanitarian service through a synergy which involves working together with Rotarians, with other like-minded people, with organizations, with governments, forming partnerships, joining hands, acting locally, thinking globally, greeting and meeting every challenge as an opportunity to serve, delighted to help, and convinced that when we all come together, peace is possible. And together, we shall attain a world at peace, at harmony, and become brothers who are truly brothers.